making adjustments to cheat out to one pin or the other. And um, you know, once we are able to recognize that, we can kind of go against the flow and uh, open people up one on one. Jordan, it seemed like you had a lot of options to go to set to today. Um, you know, Megan had a, a match. You know, Ashlyn and, and Jacqueline, of course, um, and, and Allie hit pretty well today too. How was it? You know, just really being able to go wherever you know the ball is taking you today. Yeah, I mean, we talk about it a lot that we are a very balanced um, offense, and you know, it helps a lot when we're passing really well. Um, props to our passers for making it easy. You know, we're in system a lot, and that puts a lot of pressure on the opposing block, um, and creates seams in uh, in the block and gives them uh, space to hit and um, more of an advantage to score. Four months ago, and now you're second on the team in kills in a Sweet 16 game. What's that like for you personally? Um, it's really exciting. I think I wasn't prepared for anything that happened, but just kind of coming in and really um, trying to get acclimated to the team like as soon as I could. Um, and I think just having all of them as teammates really made that easy. Um, the coaches really um, like started right from the beginning and taught me what I needed to do to kind of get used to the speed of just like playing in the Big Ten. Um, and I think that really helped. And like I said, these teammates are great. And I'm so grateful for them. Jack and Jordan, both. The Sweet 16's kind of been a, a bit of a roadblock for Illinois, uh, just in history. But just what does it mean to clear that and get to the Elite Eight this time? Uh, it's really exciting for us. I think um, kind of going into this year is kind of this is our year. You know, the seniors are leaving us, and so I think it was just really exciting to get past that point that has been kind of where we've been stopping in previous years. Yeah, Jacqueline wasn't here our first year that we made the Sweet 16, and so it was kind of like we were here, and then the next year was a pretty big dip, and then last year to get back up to here and to now and be able to climb a little bit farther, it's really exciting, and um, I think it's great for the program, all the support that we've received uh, this season and into the postseason. I mean, the crowd that we have for an 11 a.m. match, that was incredible. So we're, I think we're really happy um, with where we're at right now and just taking it one game at a time. Talked a lot about exceeding expectations in the last these last two years. How do you maybe see that? Yeah, I mean, we go into the season. Um, we don't really set a specific end goal um, for ourselves because, like we say, like I feel like we're a broken record when we say we take it one day at a time. But we really do. We take it one day at a time, and um, you know that's worked out really well for us. And yeah, to have not been expected to finish very high in the Big Ten uh, last year or um, be in the top two of the Big Ten this year. And then um, uh, I don't even know what we came in ranked this year in the NCAA. And then to get that third seed and um, to really just be kind of rolling through the tournament, it's it's exciting for us. And we're all really happy to be here. That was a big first set for you. Uh, what was working and how do you feel like that set the tone for the rest of the, the match? Um, I think it started, obviously, with the pass. I think um, our passers have been doing a great job just throughout the whole season. And then, obviously, Jordan just getting the ball where I need it. And then other hitters just kind of opening up everything. It's, um, I don't want to say easy, but, like, there's very, we put ourselves in a lot of good opportunities to just um, take big swings and um, make those plays. So um, it's really exciting. You guys look pretty loose out there for a team, you know, that's, competing in the Sweet 16 now is going to go on to compete in the Elite Eight. Is it just a reflection of, of just how well things have been going for you guys, or is it just you know a team mentality to just enjoy the moment for you guys? Um, I think it's like kind of a combination of just enjoying the moment and then confidence. I think um, in prior years, I think at least me personally, um, during tight situations, I would doubt myself a lot and I think this year just how hard we've trained and all the things that we've done leading up to these moments I think gives us total confidence just in each other and in ourselves that there's not a whole lot of like of the doubting and it's just we're going out and we're doing our thing and we don't have to do anything special to go do it like this is just who we are. I think it also helps um, in the Big Ten you face huge matchups every night and for us to have been in um, really tight high pressure situations a lot this year um, against top 15 seeds. Um, I think it just helps when we're in these situations, you know, we've been there before and we've faced offenses like this before. And so I think it just, I don't want to say we come in more relaxed, but the focus, the focus isn't a tense focus. It's a very um, confident focus, like Jacqueline said. Coach, you coached uh, Jenna this past summer and now to coach against her in the Sweet 16. What was that like today? 
yeah, I mean, she was one of our main keys out there, you know, to, to try to slow down, and we couldn't do it. She's a very good player, and, uh, you know, she, she loves the sport of volleyball. Happy to have coached her this um, summer on, on that China trip, and uh, she's a good player, and she's going to have a nice career after this. Uh, uh, with, I think she's going pro uh, directly after this, and then uh, potentially with USA. But she's she's a nice player and was one of our keys to try to stop. And uh, we we threw everything at her, but she still was able to to score a lot of points. So just a great player, great person too. And uh, and uh, yeah, she's, she'll she'll do good uh, as as she goes along with her career. Can we finish questions with the athletes before we go more for, uh, for a team that's a little bit bigger than you guys up front? Uh, what does it mean for you guys to both out block and out hit them? Um, I think it's pretty exciting. I think, um, kind of like Jordan said, how in the Big Ten we're playing these matchups matchups every night. It's, it's not anything that we're not used to seeing. Like there's huge girls in the Big Ten night in and night out. So it's, it's obviously a factor, but I don't think it's anything that um, we really worry about. So I think we're used to finding ways to get blocks and get touches um, against those bigger players, and then um, also finding ways to score against them as well. Yeah, and I think our passing helped a lot with that too. It's like for passing perfect, Jordan can literally put it anywhere she wants, and that kind of leaves a lot of like one on one on one opportunities or seams. And I think that definitely helps against bigger players too. Anything else for the athletes? Potential of facing Wisconsin tomorrow. Obviously, they have to play yet, but that's something you would relish the opportunity to uh, move to the Final Four by beating Wisconsin after you split with them. One hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean, it's awesome to see all these teams from the Big Ten be successful and be this far in the tournament and then to to go up against a team that you've played twice before and, you know, last time we played them at home, um, they got us and then we got them back when we were at their place. So I think it's going to be a really fun match. I think the fans are going to enjoy it just as much as we're going to enjoy facing a Big Ten team uh, in the postseason. So if they if they pull it out, yeah, we're really, we're really looking forward to it and we're excited. Did the 11 o'clock a.m. start affect anything, or how do you feel like you guys prepared for that? No, I don't think it was anything different. Um, before every game, all of us have our different routines, and I think we did a really good job of like keeping to those things. Um, waking up early, just kind of getting in the mindset, ready to play. It's Anything can be thrown at you, and it's just kind of how you handle that, and I think we handled that really well today. Okay, thank you, athletes. Appreciate you guys coming. Questions for uh, Chris? 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 Oh, yeah, we can manage to just hang everyone around. Chris, how do you assess the level of play from your team now at this point? Is it the best it is all season? Um, speaking as a coach, I think there's still room. <laughs> uh, you know, I think when you get into tournament uh, play, there's some moments where it's you feel like you have to make the perfect play, and sometimes the reminder is that we can just take a breath and settle down a little bit. Um, you know, when that. You know, people don't want to talk about these are different games. These are different games when your back's against the wall and you're um, you have to perform. You know, with the chance of going home and being done with it all. Uh, I think it just puts a little bit different of pressure on us. But uh, you know, I think there's a, still a couple touches we can clean up um, if we we'll go back and look at film and um, just off of some that I have memory of. But overall, you're looking for the, your whole body of work over a course of a match, and you do it compared against another team. So there's, again, it's kind of the subtle nuance of volleyball where we're, we're putting ourselves in the right position to be successful. That's what we look for first, and then it's making the play after that. I thought we could have made a few more plays today, but um, obviously very happy that we made enough of them to, to win three sets by two points, which is what we talk about. Jacqueline had the huge first set. Ashlyn had the big third. How important is it to have just multiple weapons that can kind of take over a set like that? Yeah, it's one of the things that makes us hard to stop. I mean, uh, any given moment, any given time, you know, some setters have certain tendencies to say they're going to set one way. Um, Jordan doesn't have that. Um, you can put literally put her anywhere, and she can she can distribute the ball where she needs to, make the correct decisions. And then uh, you know, if the set doesn't happen to be there, we have hitters that are able to do something with it. And that's kind of what we preach. It's sometimes it's that simple. You get a set, you like it, take a swing. You don't like it, and then you got to make them pl make them play or put them in a position that. Uh, it's going to make it difficult for them to score a point. And I thought we've been outstanding at that all year, um, letting our defense take over when it needs to, and, and then our offense when it's there to be able to take big swings. So to be able to have everyone on, you know, ready to go at all given times, it just makes it difficult for another team to sit there and try to stop us. And uh, I think you're, you saw that today uh, with their hitting percentage. But uh, throughout the course of the year, I think that's been one of our strengths. I think we're 
uh, we've hit at the top we've hit at Illinois for a long time over the course of a season. How much did Jacqueline's first set set the tone for the rest? Yeah, great. You know, she's got one of the toughest roles out there in playing six rotations. So I think whenever she gets in a groove like that, then it's, uh, I think it just obviously it helps her, but it helps the team know that, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult to stop us that day. She's a difficult player to stop regardless, um, you know, based on a lot of things. But uh, yeah, whenever one player has a great match like that, it just makes it difficult to say, you know, what, what's, what plan are you going to come up with to try to do something? And again, that's where kind of the teamwork comes in. Passing has been good. Uh, ball control has been good. Jordan can distribute. So um, it's, it's nice when you have, you know, you can go down the list and look at all of our players. Everyone's almost hitting 300 or above. So I'm uh, happy to see that. So what does maybe clearing that Sweet 16 barrier mean for this program? Um, you know, historically a lot. It's, it's the first time they've been here uh, since 2011 when they made it to the finals. And uh, again, we're not looking forward to, oh, okay, now it's 2011 again. No, it's this year, this team. And, uh, but, you know, as a program, you want to make a statement out there and you want to make sure that people know this is what Illinois volleyball is all about. This is how we play. This is how we're going to compete. And it's going to be really difficult to put a ball down on us. It's going to be really difficult to handle us um, from a serve, service seed game. And uh, we're going to have attackers coming at you every single uh, point in the road. But, uh, you know, historically, it, it means a lot. We had a lot of alumni come back. Um, a lot of alums that are on the wall up there, um, specifically for this match, just saying thank you for bringing it back to what it was, and and uh, happy that you know we're and this team is a part of it. And uh, it's just really, um, it's really cool to see the uh, the support that's been coming through over the last couple of weeks, and people that are literally missing their work to come here to watch us play, flying across country to come here and watch us play, and just uh, happy to have uh, helped the program in that regard, and the University of Illinois athletics and University of Illinois in that regard as well. I mean, you know win a match like this one and the way you did it just as part of that you know just maybe exceeding what people thought about your team what, what what does that maybe say just about how they've continued to just do anything they yeah needed to win? yeah jordan said it you know it is one day at a time for us and we never we didn't get the seed and like oh great we're the three seed that wasn't it it was uh, i mean obviously we're happy that we we're the three seed but we didn't expect to just sit here and just roll teams all the way to the final four everyone um, once you get to once you get in the tournament, really everyone's good. Everyone's either a conference champion or did very really well in their and um, their conferences. There's there's lots of uh, parity out there. I think today there's lots of different styles of play, and so we again we just tend not to get ahead of ourselves with some of this stuff. And um, you know, I, I, again, I still think we're we're beating expectations, and uh, we'll continue to do that or do our best to do that as we move on here. Coach, the attackers seem to get a lot of the shine for this program, but today you guys held Marquette to a lower hitting percentage in each set as, as the match progressed. How well would you assess your guys' defensive play so far in this tournament? Yeah, it's been great. It's uh, one of the points of, of emphasis of ours um, you know, over the course of a, the year, really. I mean, you, you need to have both. You can't just have a high-powered offense and then hope your defense shows up one day. you got to show up in both um, aspects and uh, we that's the youngest part of our team is that backcourt we have taylor cooper a freshman caroline welsh who's a junior but in her second year of playing uh, we've got morgan o'brien in her first year as libero you know trying to replace a, a great libero and brandy donnelly uh, you got jack playing her first year six rotations uh, so really you're you know it's it's probably one of the the my most proud aspects of our team is that where that's that part has come and then our block, you know, we put up as good, uh, as good a block as anyone with Allie, you know, being one of only uh, three players to get 700 blocks in the Big Ten and Jordan and Meg and uh, Jack and Beth. I mean, everyone's doing their job up there. So, again, it takes both ends. Um, you know, I think as we go further into matches, we get a beat on rhythms and and uh, I think our serving game really helps with that, too. I know some people don't like how many service errors we have. I don't think we had many today, but uh, we put a lot of pressure on teams to, to be in system and, and try to score points. And it, it's as the match wears on, I think that it gets tough against us. How much adjustment comes from you and the staff to the team, you know, throughout the match when you're looking at like just those those getting that block? Kind of, yeah, kind of what I mentioned, if patterns start to emerge where they think they have a matchup, uh, maybe they think they have um, certain situations that might help them score points. Um, again, there's some subtle changes and there's some that are bigger. Um, bigger ones might be rotational shifts and and uh, you know maybe you're shifting around with your block and defense a little bit, but um, for the most part, we we train them to be really good at reading the game, uh, which they are. So we want to give them free freedom to play, 
And, uh, you know, we're going to have a game plan. We're going to stick with it for as long as as long as we need to. And sometimes it's just could be the nerves of the match that we're going to say, OK, well, everything we're doing is fine. We're just not executing. And so, again, maybe it's a little more nuanced there with with some of the adjustments we make. But if we do make an adjustment, we're very good at doing it. And we've shown that all year. We've had to adjust on a handful of occasions uh, in our conference just because there's players that can hurt you from every position. So. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not concerned if we have to make it. Our team's comfortable with making it, and uh, I don't think we made too many adjustments today, other than um, a couple of things that we didn't execute early on. So with your one day at a time mentality, how much do you celebrate today's win? How much do you let your team celebrate because you're playing in tomorrow? I'm hoping I can get out of here so I can go scout the next match. But uh, <laughs> that's who we play next out there. Uh, yeah, you, you always want to, you don't want to be like, oh, yeah, just whatever. No, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Every win we have is a big deal. And uh, again, we've been through these battles throughout the Big Ten. You know, you've got, you know, wins at Penn State at home, at Nebraska, at Wisconsin. Uh, you have all these big marquee matchups night in and night out. And we celebrate those when we can, but we come back in and we work when we have to. And uh, that's what they've done all year. And that's what they know is expected of them. And, and, uh, and they're they're doing a great job of doing it, obviously. But yeah, we we'll celebrate this one. And uh, we like I said, a bunch of alums are in town. We're going to hang out with them today, and you know we'll high, all high five each other. And then uh, it's on to it's on to Wisconsin or Wisconsin or San Diego tomorrow. Did you get all to Illini fans for the early start? What did you think of the turnout? What's the message to fans for tomorrow? Uh, we later start tomorrow, 3 p.m. <laughs> uh, no, it's awesome. You know, on a, on a work day on a Friday, it's not the ideal time to to have. A match, um, but you know, I knew when it was set. I knew we would pack the gym, and uh, it's really important for us. You know, that's part of the re that's part of the bonus for having the three seed is you get your home crowd behind you, and uh, you know, you had probably four or five hundred students in the, in attendance. Uh, hopefully, none of them missed class, and class is very important students. Um, and uh, you had a bunch of people, you know, coming out supporting from all over the place, like I mentioned. So. Uh, again, it just really, uh, it's been great, especially la over the last couple months. Uh, it took us a little bit of time to get this thing rolling and for people to believe in what we're doing here. But now that we got it going, we're, we're seeing outpouring of support. Love it. Love to continue doing it as well. And I fully expect that tomorrow at 3 p.m. Time for one more question. If you go Wisconsin again tomorrow, what's it take to kind of win that season series? And how excited would you be for a Big Ten Elite Eight matchup? It's, it's going more points than they do. Uh, and whoever we have to end up playing, it's. Uh, you know, again, I don't want to sit here and predict who's going to win. We know Wisconsin's a good team. San Diego knocked off a good USC team uh, uh, to be here. And so we expect a battle to right now. And you know, we have scouts set ready for both of them. And um, you know, whoever we play, I think the intensity of the match is going to be the moment that we're in. It's the Elite Eight for a chance to go to, to Minnesota next week for a Final Four. So um, again, whoever you know, whoever we play, I say all the time to the to the media and to our team, anytime, any place you want to play, we'll we'll bring a team of six, you know, and the rest of everyone who contributes, and and we'll be ready to play. All right, thank you, coach. Yep, thank you.